Okay, so uh, while my topic is open to much data quality uh, assurance, uh, it will be kind of oriented on the map quality, but the process is more or less uh, the same for any uh, data set uh, uh, quality because I had uh, talks with for people who create and maintain uh, Ukrainian official uh, uh, georeference uh, based uh, data, and you have uh, the same questions and uh, the same problems and the same or less uh, solutions. So, as you see, uh, uh, while I'm uh, an open map uh, community member, I also work, but uh, yes, is my uh, work. And uh, what I tend to do is uh, merge my experience in uh, open map with uh, my professional work, basically. Uh, Using experience from OpenStreetMap in my work and vice versa. What they learn, what I know, what works in my uh, profession experience, uh, use the same things in, uh, uh, in OpenStreetMap. So, what we'll go through is uh, uh, I'll talk about the uh, purpose of quality assurance, uh, what, in my opinion, should be the process of quality uh, assurance and uh, what is the practice uh, in Lithuania of uh, doing the uh, open uh, uh, quality assurance. Okay, so what's the purpose? Why do we do it? Uh, it is important for anything we do, not only quality assurance, to understand why we are doing something. Because until we say why we do something, we do not have a context, we do not have uh, uh, like a ground we should build uh, anything. Right, so we, we must understand uh, what we want to achieve with this quality assurance because quality is not something which uh, exists per se. It's a uh, quality for something, for some specific uh, uh, target. And uh, we must understand that uh, time and resources are not uh, unlimited. So even if we talk about the map, so yeah, we have this uh, community of millions of mappers uh, and stuff. Uh, but it's not like that you can achieve for uh, anything. Uh, the resources are limited and we have to uh, decide what we want to achieve and uh, orient on that. An interesting point uh, here is uh, what we had in this uh, second uh, presentation uh, in OpenStreetMap, uh, which makes it uh, very different from our official data sets, this is uh, what I would call uh, hobby time spending. And uh, most people, uh, almost everybody in OpenStreetMap, uh, do, do this as, as their hobby, as I do. Uh, but uh, uh, what I mean here is that, uh, uh, well, I'll be talking about quality assurance for some specific uh, uh, purpose, from some specific data uh, methods. You must understand that in OpenStreetMap, yeah, you will be meeting that there are a lot of people who are just doing any mapping uh, uh, as a hobby, just they uh, have some spare minute and they just go and map, or oh, I don't know, uh, dust bin, uh, a bench, uh, or a build stand, uh, right? So uh, it's okay, it's uh, very fine, uh, some people go from that to uh, other mapping to stuff. Uh, and I used to do mapping of Hillforth many years ago, and it was like, uh, you know, 10, 15 Hillforths. At that point, the map in the train and open map. And after some time, I found some official data sets, and now it's like a thousand of tool for uh, uh, synchronized official, official data sets. Okay, <clears throat> so uh, now if we talk about uh, uh, some general uh, tasks for quality assurance, huh? so first thing is uh, uh, what we would like to have is to have some homogeneity. Uh, huh? We are trying usually not to have uh, heterogeneous uh, uh, data. What that means? Uh, uh, let's say that we have uh, uh, information on, uh, uh, let's say, buildings, right? And buildings uh, are mapped in, uh, uh, let's say, rigor, right? So if somebody is using that data set, we check rigor, they say, oh, all the buildings are mapped, cool. And we use the data set of whole blood there, right? So after looking into Riga, we have a normal expectation, they will find the buildings and the same quality in all of the lake latter, right? So and if that is not the case, then we have a uh, variety of the data set 
on the geometry of the feature uh, side, and that is not good. That is something we want to uh, avoid. Uh, and this also goes for uh, algorithms. Right? So if we have, let's say, a uh, road network, and in some places we have, uh, uh, let's say, maximum speed uh, depth, uh, let's say, once again, we take uh, a pure one. Right? And let's say that, uh, I don't know, let's say all of the max speeds are uh, attached there. Once again, you'll we'll expect that it's the same on uh, all depths, and that would not be uh, the case. Uh, another thing is, uh, uh, all those working on official data sets uh, know this uh, rule of uh, topology rules. Uh, on all data sets, we would have a number of topology rules uh, uh, defined. We should uh, say what can overlap, what, what cannot overlap, if you can, uh, cannot have gaps between uh, geometries and stuff. This is something uh, kind of basic thing in JS, but uh, uh, for some reason, it is missing in the uh, uh, open uh, map. And this is uh, something which uh, actually allows uh, creating uh, much higher quality uh, maps, both, both visually as well as uh, for users like for uh, uh, root calculation and, and, and stuff. Okay, uh, and later when we talk about purpose, talk about purpose uh, uh, it's always good to think uh, which features are actually used. Right? As I said, the resources are not uh, uh, limited. We have to think what features are used uh, and uh, actually used. So we must have an example of application of a map, uh, something where that feature uh, is used, and uh, it's usually a good thing to rent uh, our resources on actually used, uh, used uh, stuff. And you can see which attributes are used and how. Uh, so it allows us to kind of. Uh, better use resources for uh, quality uh, management. And uh, mm, you can check what are the sources available for that uh, uh, data because usually not everything uh, uh, is uh, like mm, does not have any alternative for a data source. Right? And so you can check what are the sources which you can later compare and improve for uh, the data sets uh, both for uh, OpenStreetMap and that uh, our. Uh, data. Uh, okay. And now uh, about the process. Uh, so uh, quality insurance is not uh, like uh, one step, one shot uh, action or occasion. Uh, let's say I'll do some quality assurance on the, uh, on Sunday. Okay. No, it's uh, it should be a process. Like if somebody is uh, editing, uh, have new edits, uh, update of data. After that, we are doing uh, checking. Uh, right, or preferably checking only the things which have changed, so take some time, uh, but if that's not possible, we're checking the whole uh, data set. Right, and after that, the faster uh, we do the checking, the faster we can fix the problems and inform uh, those who are doing edit editing on what was uh, a problem, what should be changed in their attitude process, uh, uh, or that should be fast. Right? And after that, we can be refining the rules which are used for checking. Right? So next time, we can do it uh, faster, better, uh, etc. Why do we need uh, this in uh, such a uh, process? Uh, <clears throat> because that way we have for continuous quality. Right? Uh, we achieve a uh, station that our quality is as high as possible at any, uh, at any time. Uh, we get a fast feedback. feedback which is very good because if somebody is uh, starting to map uh, uh, incorrectly according to the rules we set, the faster we get uh, uh, the feedback, uh, it would only not mean less errors uh, in the data set, but it will mean higher satisfaction for those persons. Because imagine somebody who like is mapping for like, two weeks something and after that we find out that, uh, sorry, you've done everything incorrectly, You'll have to delete all your work. So people will be very demotivated. So the faster you notice that, the faster you agree and understand it's, uh, uh, it's better. And from a technical perspective, if something is very wrong, uh, it's easier to uh, resort uh, to some good uh, tradition if uh, uh, not too much, too much time has passed uh, since those uh, edits. <coughs> uh, and another thing is uh, automation is uh, uh, essential. Here. 
because otherwise you need somebody constantly looking at all the edits, uh, which is just like uh, uh, not feasible. And the more automation you can do, uh, the more uh, like uh, uh, objective your checks are, and the uh, uh, faster you can get all the uh, all the checks. Right. And uh, uh, from a practical perspective, <coughs> uh, one slide is about people, uh, because we must talk about it a little bit. So this is a large topic, uh, it might have a uh, separate presentation, but just a little bit. Uh, so you must understand that people make uh, mistakes. Uh, that's natural, we just have to know that it happens and deal with it. You have to prepare to do something about it. So the main reasons why people make uh, mistakes is uh, lack of uh, uh, understanding. People come uh, from the OpenStreetMap, but they could have uh, a different uh, GIS experience. We might have no GIS experience. Uh, and because of that uh, lacking of understanding, they would be doing some uh, mistakes. So once we can go back, the faster way uh, we can uh, uh, provide information required for them. Uh, what we have for uh, how do we have to do it uh, correctly? Uh, you would have better data and as well as uh, higher satisfaction of, uh, of the method. And another thing is misunderstanding. Uh, you know, it's slightly different than the lack of understanding because this is even uh, more uh, dangerous. Because uh, I've seen that a lot of times when people start mapping and they say, oh, but this stuff is mapped incorrectly. Uh, but it's an open data, and I have a lot of bar, I'll fix everything. <laughs> and we start fixing it, and uh, oh, your, your if we know how to write scripts, and we write in, start writing scripts and fixing all the data automatically. Terrible. But also, uh, you have to catch all things uh, as, fast as, uh, uh, as fast as possible. Right? Uh, but what about those who are intentionally want to uh, mislead? Uh, I've only seen that a uh, couple of times, and it was mostly uh, mostly people doing. Uh, I saw somebody uh, drawing a forest uh, with his name, so something like that. <laughs> uh, otherwise, there are really people who think that the uh, edits they make uh, is just for themselves. They make edit uh, like for their own map, and they do not understand that sort of that change went to all of it. Database. Uh, right. So, uh, so how do we uh, create rules uh, in between? And what's the process of creating new rules? Not not the process of quality assurance, but the process of adding new rules uh, so that they identify uh, some problem. Uh, so we let's say try to create some application or some map, and we see that the data is uh, missing or uh, incorrect. And it's when we see, okay. Is it possible to write an automated uh, uh, rules? in some as well, maybe some script, something which would uh, um, enable us to do checking of a full data set. Then we check past the whole infinite data. Once again, we go back to our homogeneity of uh, data we want to fix not only in the realness or in the whatever, but in whole infinite. We check if that could be done, and if that could be done, and we would write that thing and uh, run it and fix all the problems uh, which we uh, see at that time uh, in, the, in our data, in one case in the failure. And while we do that, of course, we will check our uh, query or script or whatever that is and we will refine it. We will see what are the exceptions, uh, etc. Note this is very important because it might be that if you look at 10 or 20 objects and then automate all the fixing, uh, those rules might not work for uh, some 10 objects somewhere in the uh, on border region. Right? So going through all the uh, errors you can find to ensure that uh, everything is uh, fixable and all your rules work is uh, essential. And after you fix that, we have that to the procedure of uh, daily checks uh, uh, of the uh, whole data. So basically this means that after that, each day we ensure that uh, and newly added or changed data does not uh, reintroduce those uh, uh, problems. And we run those uh, daily, but uh, in principle, I do not see a problem of running it uh, hourly or uh, more often. Because the faster we do it, uh, the better. 
Okay, so um, talking about the fan and stuff for more than 50 uh, automated uh, rules, so those uh, running the uh, daily. Most of those are uh, attribute rules. Check that uh, attributes uh, are okay for uh, for maps and products and data sets we uh, prepare. Some geometry uh, checks, so if the geometry is uh, valid, uh, different like um, multi polygon, multi line uh, checks. Uh, and a number of uh, uh, topology, uh, topology rules. So some example of topology rules, uh, uh, the basic one is uh, no overlap rule. Uh, so for example, like the residential zone uh, cannot uh, overlap with uh, forest or, or water uh, or whatever. That is very important uh, uh, rule because without this rule, you cannot reliably produce uh, uh, maps because people uh, Spend more, more more time in OpenStreetMap. Know those uh, occasional discussions of uh, what should go first, uh, forest or water, right? And go, oh, water because you could have a lake inside the forest. Yeah, but what about uh, the forest inside that uh, lake? It's not a problem. But if you have such topology rules, you do not have a problem. It doesn't matter how what you uh, render first, uh, right? Uh, there are topology rules related to addresses. This is something which is done uh, in OpenStreetMap. Uh, what we would also want to go doing is uh, checking that that is its uh, uh, administrative uh, boundaries of that particular uh, place. This example, <laughs> what we have in some places with not very correct administrative official data, and uh, in OpenStreetMap we would adjust that administrative data to. Uh, to have correct, uh, big uh, addresses. Yeah, this is like one uh, mess of uh, things. But this is a problem with uh, official, uh, official data. And we have some uh, uh, topology rules that some uh, polygons uh, can only exist on top of uh, uh, now polygons. Like here, we have those, uh, we call it micro mapping, like small grass or uh, wood uh, areas uh, uh, which are actually on a residential zone and have a separate topology rule so that if you go to middle scales it would remove these ones and you would not have a gaps in uh, residential uh, zones. Uh, interesting rule goes from uh, generalization uh, uh, purposes is to check that uh, all the buildings uh, have for uh, uh, roads uh, leading to them uh, uh, for specific uh, uh, specific article. which also goes back to one of those things like the uh, homogeneity, so that we check that all the road networks are done. Uh, because so far in Lithuania, uh, we found like three or four buildings which do not have uh, road leading uh, up to one kilometer uh, distance. Uh, as we are uh, using uh, uh, river navigation, so we can have uh, a map and we should say that uh, I want to guide from this point to that point, it will calculate the uh, routes, say, uh, all the, this is the bridge, this is a point to put your kayak in or out, and stuff like that. So we need a good navigation in, in the river, so we are using uh, our uh, route to check that. Uh, now, all of the routes automated, uh, detected automatically, right? They are written into a database, and what we use is a very simple interface. We have a list of all the tools, uh, all, all the problems we find. Uh, and the important here uh, is that uh, there is, uh, like here, what they see, so fixed. So somebody who has uh, the rights uh, or knowledge to, to check this and fix, he will press it, that it's fixed. The point here important is that uh, that way we save uh, resources. So all the uh, errors are done. If you have three people checking, and uh, nobody will be rechecking the thing which was fixed by somebody else, right? And uh, you could also integrate it with for uh, other uh, systems like the Private Osmosis Inspector uh, and this uh, like that. And sooner or later you will find some uh, uh, disagreements. Uh, people have different opinions on uh, what has to be mapped uh, now, and uh, usually what they do is uh, uh, 
talk to them, understand, uh, try to understand what are we trying to achieve, what problems do we have, and what could we do so that all of the sites uh, will get the uh, results which we <laughs> want to, to achieve. So, that be it. Thank you. Up the microphone. I'm sure we have questions. Thank you, Thomas. Um, I have a quick question on uh, uh, sensitive objects, military sites. How do you check and make sure those don't end up on public land? Uh, you see, <laughs> actually, that's a very good uh, question because in Ukraine there are uh, movements, uh, talks, uh, especially after this, uh, like uh, other phase of uh, Russian invasion uh, about uh, hiding some uh, data. Uh, but I would be on the side of the opinion that uh, something which is visible uh, from above using remote sensing, uh, there's no point of uh, hiding that. Hiding something which is underground, you know, like uh, pipes, uh, things like that. Yeah, maybe, but uh, if we can see from uh, aerial photos, uh, there's no point of uh, uh, hiding. But have you uh, had a case where you have to remove something from no. the map? No. no. Uh, we had <laughs> some uh, thoughts uh, that uh, that's like me and another guy, uh, the guys who run OpenStreetMap in Lithuania, and they'll just write us a letter and we'll just press a button to delete and uh, we'll delete some <laughs> sensitivity that uh, you said that no. <laughs> uh, is the quality assurance process um, did you describe uh, very Lithuanian specific or is it general to OpenStreetMap? Uh, as it is described here, from what I know, it is Lithuanian uh, uh, specific. But uh, are there general rules? Yeah, there are, uh, like KeepRight, uh, as well as uh, there are other uh, tools which do uh, identify errors uh, automatically, but from what I see, we do not have this uh, as, uh, as a process. So that's a difference, and uh, they cannot do it uh, as, uh, as fast of the feedback as you can do. And we have more rules, uh, and as I said, the topology rules, so for me, it's like essential feeding in JS. Uh, I have no idea why it's not done in a wide open screen. Okay. Uh, there's a question about as how often automation results in reverting perfectly good data. Never. Never. <laughs> Automation is perfect every time. <laughs> and uh, on that note, uh, you can revert the revert. <laughs> so. uh, what about corporate editors, companies? Uh, how do they behave in Lithuania? Are there any issues? Uh, there are no issues. Mm, all of them uh, would reply to the messages which we send, and if you say that, sorry, we have uh, rules like this and that. Uh, had no problems uh, whatsoever with the React, and the next edit we make uh, is uh, okay. okay. And actually, not uh, edit too much. Uh, I think our politicians uh, will uh, work uh, good enough. For this. So usually, all the that is, you know, like 10 meter long driveways and stuff like that, and not too much else. But how many uh, corporations are actually using OpenStreetMap for their business activities? I mean, it's uh, from what I saw, uh, Bolt was using uh, at least Vilnius addresses uh, from OpenStreetMap because, for example, in Vilnius we are updating uh, addresses from municipality data each week. So, on Vilnius, uh, that is data is um, not more than one week uh, old. Okay. Uh, there's a question about overlap of land use. Uh, maybe there's a justified overlap between uh, there's two land uses, which one you then choose? So we'll check what is the actual situation uh, on the ground. <laughs> so uh, those errors, if they are detected, for example, topology rules, it doesn't mean that uh, they are fixed uh, automatically. If we see that, we can fix it automatically, then we'll do it. But 99% uh, is uh, fixed matter. It looks like a lot of work, and it is a new uh, kind of introduce a new rule. It takes sometimes uh, several months to go through all the objects and fix that. But after that, if you really run the rules uh, each day, uh, it will take uh, no, up to five minutes uh, each day to just go through the list and uh, fix it, maybe even less. There's a couple of questions about the community, OSM community in Lithuania. How big is it? 
Um, are you the only one doing the? You mentioned three guys doing the, the data projects. Uh, yeah, but that's uh, yes. But the community is larger. Uh, other people just have uh, other responsibilities, like looking for the servers because we have uh, the separate server uh, for, for maps and uh, applications. Some are doing that. Uh, other people are doing like other community stuff. And the thing, you know, another interesting thing is that we have kind of very well integrated uh, this open GitLab community with our uh, fellowship of uh, cartographers uh, and uh, uh, of our JS uh, specialists who are doing it as a profession. So I think they are all together. Uh, what about the government uh, land board, the official uh, mappers? Mm -hmm. How do they relate to OSM? Are they supportive? Or are they a yeah, bit? Yeah, they think they have to be a lot. They are supportive. They have opened the data set uh, uh, recently, but it was a uh, big uh, situation because of the war. Uh, but after it ends, uh, that data set will be fully open and will be synchronizing the open map with uh, official data set. There's a question about controversial rules. Which rules were most controversial and have any been removed? And who decides whether a rule is okay or not? Mostly it's uh, about uh, tagging disputes. And uh, there are some old rules, and somebody says that we have uh, new rules, uh, and usually tend uh, uh, to see what other actual uses. And because now, if, uh, let's say, the, he tags some object as A, and somebody says, oh, let's tag it as B. So that means we will have to change some rules, change some uh, topography <laughs> styles, uh, this and that. And we ask, so who will be doing that work? If somebody is keen to changing that, oh, well, OK, go for it. Usually, people just say, well, OK, let's change the tag in C, but uh, they do not want to do the work. So they do not want to do the work. Those who do the work do the judging. <laughs> And but there have been some changes, uh, obviously, in that. And uh, who is doing uh, some of the validation, for example, uh, for addresses uh, in street corners? Do you uh, put up a notice for somebody to go and check physically there? or uh, The addresses, uh, the point is that uh, in Lithuania, there is a law which says that uh, the address is what uh, uh, is added into a cadastre of uh, addresses. Mm -hmm. So even if we see the number of a building saying 22, it doesn't mean that that building is uh, 22 mm -hmm. if it's not uh, in a bridge. And we've seen that situation in Vilnius where somebody will see it. We have a small building and okay, this is like 10A, 10B, so ooh, let's start as 10C. It's not an official uh, address. So it's kind of uh, something contradicting. Uh, opposite map will like uh, map what is on the ground because if I go on the ground, it's in 10C. On, on the other hand, uh, fire service or medical service will not be using the uh, sorry, opposite map, will be using official data set. And yeah. 10C is not there. So it's. Uh... Okay, well, there's a few more questions, but Thomas, you'll be around. Yes. So grab him, uh, ask your questions, and once more, thank you for coming. Thank you.